Rainbow Warrior here, and today I'm going to show you how to crochet these really classic looking boot cuffs. I decided to keep things simple for this design, and I think these cuffs look really great, and you can add any details you want to these as well, such as buttons or any other design elements you can think of. So let's get started. Alright, for this project I'm using a size G crochet hook, which is kind of small for the yarn I'm using. However, I just have really loose tension, and for the look I want, I want this to look really tight. And I'm using medium worsted weight yarn. I'm just using some scraps of gray that I have left over. So we're going to begin with a slip knot. And we're going to chain 7 to start off with. We're actually going to start our boot cuffs at the top of our boot cuff, at the ribbed section. So we're going to chain 7 for our ribbed section. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and chain plus one more and we're going to begin single crocheting in the second chain from the hook and we're going to single crochet all the way down for a total of seven single crochets so here's our first single crochet and here we go into our second we reach into our chain pull through a loop yarn over and pull through both loops here's three so just single crocheting in this foundation chain so we have a bit of a base to work with here. Here's four. Five. Six. And last one is our seventh. Alright, as I mentioned, you should have seven single crochet stitches. Now we're going to chain one and turn. And we're going to work double crochets. And we're going to go into that first stitch. I know normally, normally when you do double crochet, you chain three. However, I don't, I don't like to do that. I like to keep this kind of tight. So from here on out also, I'm going to go through the front loop only, the loop closest to us. And this is what's going to give us our rib and allow us to slip our boot cuffs nicely over our leg. You don't want a really stiff, tight boot cuff or else we won't be able to get it over our legs. So I'm going only through the loop closest towards us. Normally you go through both loops and you can really go through whichever one you want. Going through this loop creates a rib on the opposite side of our work. And a small detail as well is that my first and last stitch, I go through both loops when I do ribbing. And I do this because if you don't, your edges are going to get really stretched out. And I don't like the look of that. I want the rib, but I want a nice tight edge. So just a minor detail I like to mention. I don't know if I do these things unorthodox or not, but it's how I do it. Alright, chaining one and turning. And we should be having seven double crochets for each row. We're not changing anything. And we're just going to keep doing this until we have our work long enough to wrap around our leg. As I mentioned, this is going to be the top of our cuff. So for my materials that I'm using, I ended up crocheting 23 rows to get it to wrap around my leg. However, depending on what you're doing, it may be a different amount, amount and depending on who you're making it for. So always be sure to measure. And for the double crochet stitch, we reach in to our loop, pull through a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, 
yarn over and pull through the second two loops. And here I have two rows completed. And as you can see, this is what we're making. Um, a rib section long enough to wrap around our leg and go around our boot cuff. So that's what it's going to look like once we're done. So continue double crocheting your rows until your um, piece wraps around your leg nicely or until it gets to your desired length. And remember that this section is going to stretch. Alright, so here I've crocheted long enough for this to wrap around my leg. You can count the rows very easily. And as I mentioned, I have 23 rows. You can also use a measuring tape if you would prefer to use that method as well. So as you can see, this is nice and stretchy. So it will be stretchy at the top of our calves. And now we're going to crochet along the top to give our boot cuff a nice edging. I don't really like the look of this edging. It looks kind of sloppy to me. So we're going to clean it up a bit. And we're going to do that by placing two single crochets in each double crochet stitch. So each row we just made is going to get two single crochet stitches in there. Alright, so here is one and two in my first row. And now I'll place two more single crochets in the next row. So as an example, if you have 23 rows like I do, you will be placing 46 single crochet stitches along the top here. So basically you're doing double the amount of stitches of however many rows you have if you want to keep track that way. So I'm going to single crochet all the way down this rib section here and I'll meet you at the end where we're going to attach both ends together so that we have our circular shape needed for our boot cuff. Alright, so how much better does that edging look? And of course that is optional. If you like the look of the edging that crochet gives, you don't have to do this. But I always like to give a single crochet border. Alright, and now what we're going to do is we're simply going to make sure this isn't twisted. And we're going to be slip stitching these two edges together. So really simple. We're at um, the end of our chain here where we started. We're on the opposite side of it. So we're going to go into each space. We have seven chain spaces here. I'm going to try and focus my camera so that you can see um, all the little gaps and little holes in there. So here you can see you're going to go into each hole so first we're going through the side that we're on, and now we're going to go through the lining stitch, the stitch that matches up on the opposite side. So our first single crochet, there are seven single crochets there, and we're going through our first one. And now we're yarning over, pulling through everything, because we're slip stitching. We want this to be nice and tight. Now we're going through our second stitch as well as our second stitch on our other side. And if you would prefer to seam up your edges or if you want to connect this in another way, then go for it. This is just how I like to do it. I don't like to break or cut my yarn. Alright, and I'll show you each stitch here so there's no confusion. They're yarning over, pulling all the way through. We're just simply going through one side and then the other. So going through our stitches on this side first and then going through our stitches on our other side. Yarning over, pulling through and pulling through again. I think we have two stitches left here.
last one. All right, and now that we've done that, we've attached it nicely, we're going to flip our work around and we're going to begin crocheting along the bottom now. So same thing that we did on the other side, except for this time we're going to crochet the length of our boot cups as well. So we're doing two crochets in each double crochet stitch. So we're kind of crocheting along the edge of our rows and placing two single crochets where each double crochet is. And I am also locking my tail in. I slip stitch to where I need to be and now I'm going to begin single crocheting. I know it's kind of hard to tell what I'm doing here but again just look at your work and place two single crochets along each row. And we're going to do this all the way around until we get back to where we started. If you want to, you can place a stitch marker like a paper clip or a, another color of yarn in your first stitch. If you're still new and not accustomed to telling um, where your stitches are and what your first stitch looks like. Alright, and here is about our close-up of how to crochet along the edge. So you can see there's my double crochet stitch. I'm going to place two single crochets in there. And you don't need to get too technical where you place them, just make sure you place both in there. There's my next one, one and two. and continue on your way. Alright, so I went all the way around and this completes our round one. So now I'm going to slip stitch just this one time after this first round to join it nice and neatly. If you remember we slip stitched um, to get where we wanted earlier and we're going to pass over that and slip stitch in our first single crochet. So that's where it's handy if you mark that if you needed to. And this way our round is nice and tight and we don't have an ugly gap in our work. But from here on out we're not going to chain and we're not going to slip stitch. We're just going to work in a continual round all the way around. So again if you need to you can um, use a place marker or anything if you like to know how many rounds you're doing and keep track of where your last stitch is. And you are going to continue single crocheting your rows until you are satisfied with the length of your boot cuff. And here you can see I can count my rows really easily here. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So for mine I did 14 rows of single crochet. However, it's completely up to you how short or long you would like to make your boot cuffs. And as you complete these single crochet rows, you don't want your work to be really stiff because when crochet gets really stiff, it's not flexible and then you won't be able to get it on your legs. So you couldn't tell before, but now I'm making sure that you can see I'm going through the front loop only. So the loop closest to us. And this way you don't see the rib. The rib is going to be on the inside, but it will be nice and stretchy but we're only going to see the crochet look, if that makes sense. So, um, when you do ribbing, if you go through the front loop, the ribbing will be on the opposite side, and if you go through the back loop, it will be on the side you're working on. Just a little detail. So and when you've completed a round, don't forget that we're just going to simply keep single crocheting in each stitch around. We're not slipping or chaining, or anything. And that way, as you can see in my work, you can't even 
uh, tell where the seam is. We just have a nice continuous look. Once you're satisfied with the length of your boot cuff and you've reached um, the end of your round, you don't want to end your cuff at a random spot or else it will look weird. We're simply going to go into our next stitch and we're going to slip to end off our boot cuff and pull that tail through and um, whenever you slip stitch it leaves this ugly little bump in our work so in crochet let me show you what I do to fix that we're gonna go through the second um, stitch from where we ended and we're going um, from back to front with our hook and we're pulling that tail through that loop now we're going to enter our last stitch and go from back to front of the back loop only, so the loop furthest away from us. We're going to grab that tail again and pull that through. And this creates um, kind of like a loop over top of it and hides that ugly little bump. So that's just a quick little tip on how to finish your work off nice and seamlessly. And here you can see our boot cuff. It's nice and stretchy at the top. And I really like the look of this boot cuff. I'm surprised how much I like the crocheted look. And this is really a simple classic look that I started with here. You can add two buttons right there at the closure. I think that would look really nice. Or you can add any other details you wanted. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to start with a simple design. If you like this tutorial, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And you can subscribe for more tutorials. Leave me requests down below in the comments or any other questions you may have. And hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.